This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Everybody and welcome to Spain and to Barcelona. This is a city where history is everywhere. In the architecture, the statues, some extraordinary buildings. But Barcelona is a vibrant place where its citizens can study, work and play. There's a fantastic coastline and if you so desire, you can still find secluded beaches away from the millions of tourists that flock here every year. We're just outside of Barcelona at Montmelo, a village that goes back to the year of 945 and is home to around about 9,000. Although that number will be a little higher this weekend because on the Formula One track that nestles within the boundary of Montmelo, it's the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. Here we are in uh, Hankook 24 Hours uh, Barcelona, so we are at the Circuit Barcelona Catalunya for the Hankook 24 Hour Race uh, for the, uh, these are touring cars and GTs. For 2018, this is a touring car and GT series race. Last year, however, the race was only for touring cars. Last year we had the touring car uh, group here, but we got a lot of questions from the GT. We actually would like to drive with the GT in uh, Barcelona, so we, uh, we managed to, to do that. So here we are with the GT and the touring car, so we have a fantastic grid. This is the 20th time the race has been run. And locally, it's known as the Trofeo Fermin Vélez, an homage to the famous Spanish driver who died in 2003. He was a, a, a fantastic driver. He was uh, driving in, in USA. He is coming from Barcelona. Uh, and uh, his family always uh, makes a special trophy because uh, her mother was a designer for jewelry. The weekend started on Thursday with private testing. Friday, it was free practice and qualifying. During the qualifying session, the positions for the start grid were set. The SPX class pole sitter, Leipert Motorsport, weren't really pleased with their overall position. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. We are hoping to go a bit better, but we just didn't quite get the lap in. So, um, yeah, we'll just see how we go in the race now. The 85 Pro Speed team held pole position until the very end of qualifying. On what everyone expected to be the last lap, Tom Onslow Cole jumped up to second. But as Tom came over the line three seconds before the chequered flag fell, he could go on to do one more lap. Yeah, we had a couple of sets of tyres to run in uh, in qualifying and we were quite close with the, uh, the first set. But as things got quicker and quicker through the session, uh, you know, we wanted to have another go at it. We, uh, we felt we had the pace to be on pole position, uh, but didn't quite have a clean enough uh, lap. So uh, it was a case of making the decision to see if we went out there to chase it and uh, take the glory of, of pole position uh, or not. But in the end, the team uh, gave me the opportunity to go for it and, uh, and we delivered. Very close call. We made it across the line with three seconds to go and uh, thankfully put the lap together nicely. So pole for Ram Racing, pushing Pro Sport to the second position. We got in a good lap early on and we were hoping it'd be enough, but uh, in the end, Tom just pipped us on the last lap. So uh, a little bit uh, gutted for that, but we're, we're feeling really confident going into the race. Charlie's starting, so uh, we'll get a good start. He, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's done it plenty of times. He also started at Portimo and uh, we won that in class, so we're feeling good. Qualifying also showed some teams that their cars needed extra attention before the race. Well, we were quickest on the in the test on the Thursday, and then we were always up in the top three or four. But we found a broken exhaust manifold after qualifying, which had lost us some 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 performance. We managed to fix that, so hopefully we'll be back up there at the sharp end. They'll be 13th on the start grid, but drivers know the start position in an endurance race is of minor importance. We talk a lot about qualifying, but this is such a small part of what we have ahead of us. Uh, 
to get to the end of a 24 hour is, uh, is a huge challenge as it is to get there in the lead is, uh, is something very special. So, uh, you know, we think we've got the speed, we have the car with the Mercedes is very quick. We have a fantastic team with Ram. We just need to be very clean. You know, this is the key. We need to stay out of the pits and stay out of trouble. So uh, hopefully I can, I can deliver this and, uh, and the guys racing uh, alongside also. Uh, well, we've got to get to the end of the race, so, you know, we get to the end, hopefully we're at the top of our class and uh, wherever we finish overall, you know, anything in the top ten is a bonus, really, so, yeah. I think we've got to stay out of trouble, obviously there's plenty of runoff uh, on the first corner, they, they will be fighting a little bit, but we also have to be a bit safe. I think the first hour, or the first few hours in this race, uh, in the past have always been a little bit messy with quite a few safety cars so as long as we're not involved in one of them then uh, we'll to make sure that we have a clean race and we take it all the way to the end hopefully. Most drivers will tell you you can't win a 24 hour race in the first corner but you can lose it there. But that doesn't mean you have to take that first corner slowly. Obviously when the lights go out and you're a racing driver then it kind of you have to really watch it and I could be I found from experience if I take it too easy, sometimes that can be worse than sort of being not super aggressive but being positive. So I'm hopefully going to make it through the first sort of, especially here in Barcelona, turns one and two, they kind of concertina together. You've seen a lot of incidents at the starts of races there. So hopefully we'll get through there. Everyone will get through there unscathed and we can go from there. If you look at the, at the qualifying times and how close uh, all the class are together, it will be a battle from the first lap till the fast lap. Pace car is in the pit lane and it's up to the pole sitting number five AMG GT to set the pace. The Ram Racing team knows they're in for a battle. Saturday the 8th of September, 12 o'clock, the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona is about to start. As the lights go out, the full grid accelerates towards the first corner. Not just the cars in the GT series, but the Touring Car series who are racing in their own championship. You can see the highlights of that race in a separate programme. Meanwhile, the field are at the first corner and the cars are starting to get into their rhythm without incident. Christian Frankenhout in the number one AMG Mercedes. He started from fourth, but already second. In the top six, three Mercedes AMGs, an Aston Martin, an Audi and the Ferrari from Bohemia Energy. I just stay out of the trouble and try to keep my pace. And for the moment, uh, we are confident the car is working well. And we didn't do any mistake. The tactics of the Prague-based team, not just based on speed. Uh, as always, uh, we have a problem with our engine compared to the Mercedes. So for me, it was only defending my position. Uh, but I think it was quite good. Uh, I can keep the, fi the fifth position and uh, everything was good. The GTs quickly catch up with the touring cars. For the drivers, that means they have to pay extra attention to the cars who are racing at a different speed. The German Car Collection Motorsport team have a burst tyre on the front straight and they will be the first pick caller. In the first part of the race, we had a problem with, with the tyres. Uh, the, no any problem, but uh, in one corner, the car, in the rear, uh, the tyre brake and only this. Unfortunately, on its way back to the pit lane, the car suffered more damage, but the ingenuity of the pit crew meant the team could get the car back into the race quickly. Whilst out on the track, a code 60 was called to enable the marshals to get the debris cleared. It was a quick clean-up and we're back to green flag racing and the battles recommence. The second car collection entry is working its way through the field. Max Edelhoff started from 12th position and now passes the 620 Aston Martin, who started third. One driver who is certainly pleased with his time on track is Dimitri Angelabert. I took a, a big pleasure. Uh, my stint um, was beautiful. And um, during maybe 20 laps, um, I, um, I was just behind a Ferrari. And uh, it's a, what, a, a big pleasure to, um, to make a big fight with him. Very difficult to overtake because uh, Ferrari has uh, got a lot of power. And the top speed is incredible with Ferrari. Um, yes, a good stint. In the midst of that battle, the FF Corsa Ferrari has hit debris that has come from the 33 car collection machine. With the second tyre new, uh, we had the same problem. Uh, one part of the car uh, was broke and then we put a new tyres 
and the new tyres was broken. The team repaired the bodywork that damaged the tyre and Ivan's aim now for the race is clear. Uh, it will be no, no more problems and it will be uh, to, to pass uh, the other cars. Driver changes have taken place but when the number 23 FF Corsa is back on track Bonamy Grimes find himself facing in the wrong direction. That causes a code 60 to allow the marshals to get him back onto the track so he can continue his race. Different makes of cars do race in the same class. The organisers set a balance of performance for each class so that all cars, whether they're Audis, Mercedes or Ferraris, have an equal chance to win each battle that they are fighting. Yes, um, Mercedes is not um, slower than Ferrari. Uh, I think we have uh, a lot of downforce and uh, with, uh, with my car I, uh, I can brake very, very late and um, it was a difference. So it's an average, um, it's uh, the same thing than Ferrari, but Ferrari has a big, uh, big power and we have a big downforce. As more cars need to be pulled out of the gravel, let's take a look at how the field sits after the first three hours of racing. At the top of the standings, having completed 81 laps, the Rothko number 31 Mercedes AMG, they have a full lap over the rest of the top four. Second overall, the number 11 Ferrari of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. Third, the Ram Racing number five Mercedes. In the A6 AM class, it's the Pro Sport Performance Mercedes AMG leading, and they have a lap lead over second place number one Hoffer Racing. The Audi number 34 of Car Collection Motorsport is a further lap down in third. In the GT4, class it's the Spanish team of NM Racing that leads they also have a lap over their nearest competitor second place the number 23 of QSR third Nova race number 227 this is endurance and endurance racing everything has to go well the competition nowadays is so high so uh, you know you have to be quick team has to do a faultless job the car has to you know, stay, keep on running without any issues and uh, only then you can be successful in endurance racing. This is the fifth round in the FIA sanctioned 24-hour GT series powered by Hankook and we're at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya is a very special track. It's got a lot of famous from history, but also from the Formula One uh, dream. Uh, the, the, the Spanish uh, fans are really enthusiastic. Uh, they like uh, uh, motorsports. It's a fantastic and challenging track for the, the drivers. So uh, all those this together with the big grid makes it very special and interesting for drivers and teams. I think the circuit is uh, quite interesting in terms of driving because uh, there are uh, many types of corners. There are fast corners, uh, slow corners, uh, some uh, blind corners. I mean, in general, is a, is a circuit uh, very, very attractive. And the, and the drivers uh, normally are uh, very tired but satisfied after the 24 hours. Over the years, the circuit layout has changed to meet Formula One requirements. They make a chicane, they did that for Formula One, actually for touring cars and GT car, the, the, the chicane would be, should not be there to have a, a fast corner, but it's still a, a very nice uh, uh, track, right? Yes, this track for me is my home, I live near here, uh, five kilometers near here, and I, and I race here a lot of times, and it's a, a good track for me and for my driving. Ah, I, I, I like this track. Um, oh, sorry, I have to go in the car. Sorry. OK, let's get back to the race then. Where the Gulf liveried Rothko Mercedes is trying to overtake one of the Touring Car Series entrants, but not taking into account the speed difference and the blind spot. While the other car stays on his line, there's a minor collision and both cars continue their race. The EB Motors Porsche is taking a little more care to pass a group of Touring Cars. No risky passes here, the 555 allowed to take the corner at his own pace and the Audi will be overtaken at a later stage. The 204 reverses, having had issues, the 65 tries to recover from a spin safely, driving away from the circuit through the gravel trap but gets stuck. Meanwhile, the 204 had to be recovered back to the pit lane. Uh, turn 13, I believe, I got hit by a Porsche 
on the right hand side back uh, wheel after the apex. Uh, I have to see what is going on, but uh, for the time being, I'm, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem, but uh, let's see. Still, Julien loves to race this 6.2 litre Vortex 1.0. It's amazing. It's uh, beautiful for a gentleman driver like us. It's uh, fairly easy to drive, it's fairly quick, so it's a beautiful car. There are approximately 60 cars in the race, and be it in class or for overall, everyone is looking forward to getting onto the top step of their podium. That is, if you can look forward. One team that certainly have their eyes on finishing first after the 24 hours is up is Herbert Motorsport, and it wouldn't be their first win. We had good races in 2016 here at Barcelona. This was a year where we can, could win this race, but we had also some races, uh, especially one year before, that we have a broken gearbox two times and didn't finish, so looking forward for this year. Alfred is racing in their trusted Porsche with the number 911. I'm happy to drive this car. I like it very much, and hopefully we can finish this race. Uh, top three? Yeah, would be great. Hoffa Racing, clear about what they expect. A podium, because we deserve it. Shanta did the amazing stint, very fast times. Christian had the fastest lap in the first stint. So 24 hours is long. I hope in the end we will be in the podium. Drama for one of the early contenders for the overall podium. The pole sitting number five Mercedes AMG of Ram Racing has stopped. I just went out my first, for my first stint and after three laps the gearbox broke. Uh, I probably had to do with a spin earlier in the race. So yeah, there was nothing I could do about it. Nothing the team could do about it. It was just a big shame. So uh, we are out of the contention for the win, but now we are still trying to, uh, to get up the leaderboard and try to get a good result. Recovery services here is in the capable hands of the Royal Automobile Club of Catalonia and they have another customer. On the turn number four, I don't know what's happened, uh, the car number 76 uh, may kick me out, uh, a big problem, it crashed me half car on the back. Uh, I think they have uh, uh, <coughs> lost uh, brakes, uh, something like that. And after they fly it over, uh, I don't know if you have seen the, the, the story, but it was terrible. Our, our race is finished. The Porsche 911 of Herbert Motorsport is currently second, leading the race, the number 11 Ferrari, Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. Yes, we, we are at our pace, and also the Porsche is not fast like, uh, like our car, but they are really consistent, like us, and we are first and second. As the FF Corsa Ferrari is being fueled, the fire extinguishers have to be used when a small fire breaks out. Yes, yeah, well that's, I think, built up from the, from the damage earlier on as well. The exhaust has been twisted around, so the heat isn't getting out. So um, it's not helping in straight line speed, which is a shame. But also, yeah, we we're a bit worried about that. But I think they've, they've cured the problem now in terms of any safety from a fire point of view. This is multi-class racing, so trying to anticipate the behaviour of others on track is essential. Yeah, it's getting pretty difficult because um, there seem to be many unexperienced drivers on the track, so it's very critical to overtake. Um, sometimes you think they see you and you dive in and suddenly um, they, they cross the line. So you have to be very, very uh, careful not to touch any other cars because you have to survive for 24 hours. Already, some of the teams have done long repairs and got their cars back out on track. Unfortunately, others have had to retire. Let's see what this does to the standings. Seven hours of racing and the top three has been shaken up. The Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari now leading. They've got two laps in hand over the Pro Sport number 85 Mercedes. Herbert Motorsport in the top three with their Porsche 911. The 991 class, the number 64 from Porsche Lorient team and the Edex Sport number 75 are first and second and have an advantage of 19 laps over the competition. The EB Motors number 73 in third. In SPX, the True Racing number 16 entry leads having completed 190 laps. Their crossbow has a lap lead over the number 10 Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini. Third, the other KTM crossbow from True Racing, the number 117. The series is organised by Creventic, who are renowned for their efficient organisation. That's achieved by the dedicated staff that are always on hand. Yeah, we are still a small uh, group in Creventic, uh, uh, which we all do preparing this. Then we have uh, a lot of volunteers who help us out during the, the weekend. 
the volunteers have all kinds of responsibilities and are part of the big Creventic family. I'm here and where they need help, I can help them. What I like about it is the team spirit, that you can do such a great event with uh, a few people and um, make this happen. So that's what it brings me, to be part of this team. I like sort of work here since 2015. So and you experience things and you learn a lot. So you can do uh, stuff more than last year and you learn more. So for those with career aspirations in this line of work, Creventic offers internships too. We do have a lot of uh, internships and uh, I think uh, we are a dynamic uh, uh, organization. We do a lot of organization work so people can learn from them. We learn also from those young people. They are enthusiastic. They bring us new ideas and that's also that's a combination. We learn from them, they learn from us. How can we do better? This is my first weekend. I just started uh, the internship on Monday so it's uh, five days ago now and I went here on Tuesday getting to know so many people. I already saw that I uh, got to know so many people for just in these three days I've been here. Brianna is no stranger to the 24-hour series as she's a daughter of one of the team owners. I came here because my parents have a racing team and they've been uh, to many events from Creantic and um, yeah I've been here too for several years and I always liked the races uh, organized by Creventic and um, yeah, so I thought about doing an internship because I um, made my A-level in Germany. Uh, for now I really like the things I have to do here. It's really interesting to see what is behind the curtains because I just, I've just seen uh, what's happening during the race uh, from the team view and now I can see everything from the organization. It's the evening of the 8th of September 2018 and the number five Ram Racing AMG GT is trying to claw back positions they lost earlier. The number one Hoffa Mercedes AMG is in turn hunting for the top position in the A6 AM class and ultimately also the overall podium. Darkness is beginning to fall and the lights on the cars are getting switched on. The darkness will change the visual markers for the drivers, but the racing will stay the same. Uh, you know, the, the races are really long, so for the moment everything is perfect, but we, we still have to do 16 hours. So we are keeping going and uh, we are doing uh, as best as we can. EDEC will not have the opportunity to race their car in the dark, having already retired. And as Patrick Lafarge can explain in any language but English, this is due to a broken engine. The motor, uh, no motor de rechange, so uh, no, fini, terminé. And uh, championnat, uh, capote, <laughs> motor, too warm. The FF course of Ferrari have had to come in. Their diffuser was damaged in an earlier collision and was causing the car to feel unstable. And this has cost them even more time. One of the teams that have joined the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona is True Racing. They have brought two crossbows. Part of their team is Naomi Schiff, who is happy with their progress. This is an enjoyable series, but our car, the KTM Expo GT4, is uh, particularly good in long distance races. Uh, I think we have quite a lot of advantages with our car. Low use of tyres, low use of fuel, and the car can just last really long in long distance races, and that's what attracts us to the series. Right now we're fighting quite hard for the lead in our class, which is SPX. We're quite surprised to actually see that we can go for the win uh, in the SPX class, and that's our goal now, to just keep fighting, make it to the end, and hopefully be on the top step of the podium. The Crevendic organised endurance series has become a yearly attraction for the Barcelona track. Many visitors, especially those supporting the local teams, turn up. Indeed, the pit box of the NM racing team is packed with fans. Yeah, we have a full box. All our friends, all our young drivers of karting uh, are here supporting, supporting the team and supporting our drivers. It's really nice to see all our karting drivers here supporting also. Unfortunately, everyone could see that there were issues during the pit stop. A Porsche Cup had a little contact with us. So we were checking everything uh, from the from behind. Diffusor a little bit break, but nothing important. We are running well. All looks fine. Let's cross fingers. The spectators at the Barcelona track can see that the car that qualified on pole 
is now smoking at the side of the circuit. In order to recover the Ram Racing number no. 5 safely, a code 60 is required. When the race is neutralised like this, many teams use the opportunity to get fuel and perhaps to do a driver change. I drove in the dark. It wasn't fun, it was very hot in the car still. We have a problem with, uh, with uh, air condition and uh, also with fresh air. It's all clogged. So it's much, much warmer than Portimao, for example. But it's OK. Philippe Burrell is about to start his second stint in the 204 Vortex. This is not his first race in this series and not his first visit to this track. Last, last year, I, uh, I have uh, Seat Leon and we have finished third in the category. No drive vortex, big car, but we have problem. Philippe's stint is off to a bad start, a crash that puts him into the barriers. Well, it's uh, nearly midnight, we're halfway through. We started having a few issues. The diffuser, which is giving you downforce on the rear of the car, fell off the car, and uh, or almost fell off the car. So that's causing some problems for everyone, and the car was a little bit uh, evil to drive, but FF Corsa really worked hard on it. Now it's midnight, uh, a lot of things happen already, big, big competition, and uh, yes, we're halfway, so halfway to go. Racing will continue through the night, but first, let's have a look at the standings. 12 hours down and 12 to go here at Barcelona, and the Bohemia Energy Ferrari is still on top of the pile. It's now a three lap lead for the number 11 over the Herbert Porsche number 911. With third place just 38 seconds further back, that's the Pro Sport number 85. Now, that is an A6 AM car, which obviously is leading its class. So, if we stay with the A6 Pro category, where just one gentleman driver is required, it's the Rothko number 31 in third. In SPX, the Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini number 10 has taken the class lead with the true racing crossbows in second and third for the 116 and 117 respectively. This is endurance. Oh, pushing yourself to the physical limits. That's endurance. Motorsports is anyway a team sport, but when it comes to endurance racing, you have to work much harder together as a team. Uh, everybody has to have a good understanding and compromise is so necessary. So it's a race where everybody has to come together as a team. It's just past midnight here in Catalonia, where the racing continues in the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona. Driving in the dark is a major attraction of these 24-hour endurance races. Yeah, I always enjoy driving in the night. Um, you know, the power is a bit higher because of the, the fresh air. The downforce levels are higher, and um, it's, it always, it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's okay, we've done it already. Uh, it's more difficult, but, uh, but it's okay. As long as there's no rain. Not all drivers have experience of racing at night. Myself and Johnny have got plenty of experience. Johnny Molan driving the car and but Ivan Bon, um, Bonamy Grimes and Ivor Dunbar never driven a 24-hour race before, so they just want to get through the night, get some night driving done and hopefully come out the other side and then we'll see, um, see if we can just plug away at getting a little result right at the end. But just making it to the finish is the main focus for the guys this weekend. Drivers will take a rest, spectators can try and sleep a little, but that's not a luxury available to everyone. No, if you look behind at the crew, I mean, they're working their what's this off they're working so hard and uh, for them it's really tough i mean for the mechanics it's way tougher than the drivers because they're awake last night we had an exhaust manifold issue it had to be welded we found after qualifying there was losing its boost and potentially going to damage the car where it was going to burn have a fire so they worked till like four five in the morning came back at seven and now they're, they're going through so if you see them asleep they deserve to be asleep about to get in to do his night stint, Rick Broikers. He started this series in the Red Camel Seat. He's since moved on, but he's back here in Barcelona. Normally I'm driving for Lamborghini. Uh, now I got the opportunity to drive for Mercedes, and of course uh, it's a good opportunity. So uh, I'm happy to be here. And now I'm about to go for my uh, double stint. So uh, we will see how that goes. Any 24 hours is not easy, and the experienced drivers know this. Well, I've done a lot of 24-hour races, so I know that there's always a moment in every 24-hour race I've ever done where I question my sanity for being here. 
And I think this one is no different so far, but uh, I haven't got to that point yet, so we're having fun at the moment. Battling for second, the 85 Pro Sport Mercedes, but they need to come in. And we had a problem with one of the uh, brake calipers. It locked on, so Charles was having a hard time getting the car to roll. We had to get here, open it up, and get it freed up. And that took quite a bit of time, unfortunately. Well, we'll look up there and add a lap back and say, what if, what if it could have been? In endurance racing, consistency is a key word, but not every type of consistency is helpful. Yeah, we had a problem with the pin that is keeping the, the wheel. Uh, they just cut and I lost the tire, the left uh, rear. Uh, it's funny because uh, it happened to me exactly the same thing in 2014 in the same corner. So uh, maybe they don't like, they doesn't like me the corner. <laughs> Still an enjoyable enough stint. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, I had a problem in the first couple of laps, but then uh, it was smooth, uh, very nice. And not as warm as in uh, daytime. The Nova race Janetta was recovered to the pit lane. The green flags are out again and we return to full speed racing. Italian team EB Motors racing their Porsche 991 Cup, but then the dashboard says there's a problem. I see the water temperature then go high and high, and uh, we we return to the to the pit, and then we check and we see that we have some problem with the engine, and so we decide to to, to retire the car. This could be collateral damage from the accident the team had earlier in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so we we think so because my my father in in his uh, turn. Have some problem, uh, one car that crashed in the back, so we, we repair it. But uh, I think that the problem of the engine is uh, is a part of this uh, damage. Nova Race missed the event here last year as it was touring cars only, but they're back, but not in the car they intended to race. It's very nice we're back because uh, we haven't been driving here for two years. Now we're back and uh, we were supposed to come with the upgrade of the Ginetta, but we could not. Uh, arrange the car, so we're driving with the old G55, uh, without traction, without uh, ABS, so we're doing good. Uh, we just, uh, it, it's good because on the endurance races, the difference in performance is uh, flat down if you have the good driver driving, so no problem. Number 11 Ferrari have had a good race. Now in second, but that position is in danger. We were just going and suddenly when we changed the brakes so the car started to have a really long brake pedal and we couldn't really understand why, what was happening, so we tried to really reset the ABS to do all the procedures, but nothing was really helping it. Then we stopped, changed the brake pads which cost us lots of time and then finally we stopped for the fuel, we reset it all the car completely which took some time again. Then we came back but it was code 60. So I couldn't really try, but then Matteo came in the car and, and in the end it was fine. So luckily now everything is fine. We have to hope that it will stay like this till the end of the race. An accident to one of the Touring Car Series competitors has caused a code 60. And with three quarters of the race completed, it's a good time to look at the standings. Coming out of the night as overall leader is the number 911 Porsche from Herbeth Motorsport with a two lap advantage of the number 11 Ferrari from Bohemia Energy. Third with 493 laps completed, the Rothko Racing number 31. Fourth overall and leading the A6 AM class is the Hoffer Racing number one. After 18 hours, they have just 33 seconds advantage over the Pro Sport Racing number 85. One lap further back, in third position in class, the number 34 from Car Collection. The number 215 Ginetta G55 has a 30 lap lead in GT4. The identical car from Nova Race, the number 227, is second and QSR is third. Series sponsor Hankook bring a lot of new tyres to the track and get a lot of used tyres in return. These used tyres are analysed by Hankook tyre specialists. After the life cycle of the tyre, that means when the stint is gone, the tyre come back to us, we demount the tyre, then you saw the tyres over there, how many of them they are already waiting, and then we select some of them for a so-called internal check. What we are doing there is we're checking the tyre wear, which is very, very important, not only for us, especially for the teams, because then we can tell them, okay, your car setup is good, your car setup can be approved in some uh, directions, however, and we also select data about for us, which are for us internal very important about life cycle, mileage, and especially camber angles and so on. Look here, for example, what we're doing here is you see this is the tire after using. This is the normal surface of the tire. After cleaning, the tire look like that. So that means we put all the pickup tire away. 
to see the clear picture of the tire. From this side, this was the outside we used, this was the inside, you can see a big difference. Here you can see the tire wear, where you have the so-called indicators. Outside it looks really good, but here inside the tire, you see it's nothing there, it's gone. And you see also the different shape. Here especially, it really looks very good. Here the problem already starts, and this is already a zone inside the tire where the tire was used almost too long. Still the tire was in a good condition, but maybe another five laps and problem starts. That's the reason why we check this. Teams use all that information to set up their cars even better than before and to improve their performance and their championship chances. Time for the tyres to start working again as the green flag is waved. 18 hours completed, daylight on the verge of returning to the Catalan region, teams starting to reflect on this race. Neil Montserrat is very enthusiastic. Yes, yeah, really, really good. We are really happy. The boys are performing really good. The car is amazing. Uh, we are we are with a brand new Gineta G55 GT4 2018 spec. It's the first race for us with a GT4 full spec car. Uh, we are preparing for GT4 uh, series and 24 hour series next year, full championship. So this, this race is really important for us. It's the first race and we are performing really well already. The team did an amazing effort. Mechanics, engineers and the drivers, the five drivers are developing really good. The number 204 Vortex V8 has already endured two crashes and in the early morning they're in trouble again. The driver was in the stadium uh, turn 10 uh, at the end of the break. One car uh, touched it uh, at the rail train. It was the second time that we changed it. We don't have enough pace to change the spare parts. We have a lot of crash this race and we have a spare part uh, for two crashes, not for three crash. Outside it's getting clearer on the track, but it's a different story if we're asking for clear standings. Yeah, it's always like here. It's uh, the rum racing cars, the pro sport cars, it's, and our drivers, their drivers, so it's quite equal. The team is a mix of professional and amateur drivers, and that's essential for the team's success. We had a very good setup done by our pro drivers, so it's very easy for our amateur drivers to go. Chantal is doing the same lap times as Roland, even a bit faster, so we all have to get up with our pace to be as fast as she is. She's now in the car for nearly a one and a half hour, so it, will, it works fine. And their competition are also happy with their pace. The car is uh, very good. The team will make a good job. Uh, we were was not so lucky with the code 60 fast. But the, uh, every time we was in the box, before, behind. So, uh, but we uh, are on the third pl uh, places. It's okay. The racing is still right on the ragged edge in this FIA-sanctioned endurance race, enjoyable for spectators and teams alike. The crossboard true racing is in the pit lane for a regular pit stop, but the team makes an extra repair to the side window. Our car has no doors. We have a canopy that opens, like, like to the front. So we have safety doors when we have a rollover. There's a safety door that the driver can can put out and I think during a driver change someone hit the, the emergency door and then the window fall off. For sure we had to fix it because it's it's dangerous when the when the door is open. Pro Sport number 85 is fifth overall but the A6 and Mercedes has the number 17 A6 Pro Mercedes of EDEX Sport chasing them down. We had a little contact and he was the, the winner of that contact but it was all fair game. We were just racing, and, and I think he was a little bit quicker than I was. So, yeah. After passing the A6 arm entrant, the EDEX Sport number 17 sets their sights on the Rothko number 31. But the Rothko team have a couple of laps in hand, and their car is running perfectly. Yeah, the Rothko team and the Mercedes AMG GT3 was a um, very fast and uh, easy to drive car, so uh, it was really good. We were competitive from the beginning on. We could take the lead. We dropped back a little bit. We could catch up again. We're on a podium place, so um, yeah. Nearly nine o'clock in the morning, 
and Adam Christodoulou is looking forward to his stint. I'm going to push as hard as I can. Uh, we need to try and get the advantage on the number one car, so at the moment it's pretty close. Depending on the strategy, depends on who's ahead, so all I can do is push like hell and uh, hopefully in a few hours we'll be leading. Just three hours to go and the 85 is due in shortly for a driver change. So before that happens, let's see its position and those of its competitors. No changes in the top three in the order with the Porsche of Herbeth Motorsport, the number 911 still leading. They have two laps over Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha in second and the number 31 from Rothko Racing is in third. Team Porsche Lorient Racing dominates the 991 class. The 64, where Lionel Amarouche is handing over to Pascal Gibbon, is leading. Alain Demorge in the 65 is second. Rodrigue Gion in the QSR number 94 is in third. In A6 Am right now, the Pro Sport number 85 has a lap of the Hoffa Racing number one. Third is Car Collections number 34. This is endurance yeah endurance is about teamwork about drivers mechanics refueling tire changing and hopefully a podium in the end you need a lot of good luck and uh, that, that's the most important for a 24 hours race because you can have mechanical issues uh, personal issues and yeah the most important is good luck It's busy on the Catalonian circuit. The Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona has brought 41 teams with 49 cars and 198 drivers to the race. But that's not all the teams and drivers who are competing for 24 hours this weekend. As the race on the track commenced, exactly at the same time, sim racers started their event and their race goes all the way through to 12 o'clock this afternoon. Well, we are in the Circuito Barcelona Catalunya in the in the room of for the eSports and we have uh, 15 simulators and we are uh, making a very big competition. I'm very proud of this. That is the 24 hours of sim racing. What is missing for the e-competitors though is the diversity of cars that we see in the real race. Well, for the for the virtual race, we we always want to make the the most exactly uh, conditions of competition equalize all the participants, equalize all the drivers. So for, for this in the virtual, there is a, a one, only one class of car, it's the Porsche RSR uh, 911 <laughs> and it's the only car uh, the sim drivers uh, can, can drive. Because there are Porsches on track outside, there is an opportunity for comparison. It's very funny, but the, the times for, for the lab is almost the, the same in the real than in the in the virtual, almost the same. One of the competitors, Alberto Fabrica, is part of the commentary team for Formula One for the Spanish broadcasters. He's having his maiden race here in Barcelona, and his first stint wasn't easy. There is a lot of things that you don't control. I'm um, still not get uh, really used to the to the car, to the circuit, to how to develop my, my and try to improve the times and uh, yeah, watching to the mirrors to try to do not uh, be the, the number one of the race, just clashing with the leaders or something like that. So yeah, I'm, I suffered a lot on the first scene. I was quite nervous and uh, there is uh, some tricky situation for me, but uh, I'm pretty much sure that at the end of the day, just 24 hours, I will uh, say that I will enjoy a lot. Everyone who is involved is loving having the virtual race here during the 20th year of the 24 Hours of Barcelona. And there's proof that crossover from virtual to real racing works. We already uh, experienced this, this thing that from in 2008 uh, here in Spain, Lucas Ordóñez, was, it was the, he was the very first uh, driver who became from the virtual to the reality. And af after, the, after him, a lot of drivers make this the this, this same way, so the way is still going. So we expect a few of today's e-competitors soon to be in a race car on the tarmac. Back from the pixels to the smell of rubber on tarmac, just three hours to go. The 911 of Herbeth Motorsport has a two-lap lead to its nearest competitor. It's only a small margin though, as a lot can happen in three hours. Pro Sport have done their driver change. Adam Christodoulou now behind the wheel. Charlie Putman has finished his stint. Woo! 
It's warm out there. But uh, that's a very physical track, very, very physical track. Works a lot. So we had fun though. Yeah? Yeah, it's a race. I mean, you know, a lot of times we go into these things and the 24 hour races are sort of decided, you know, by the last couple of hours, depending on lap leads. But then anyway, we've got three cars doing really good lap times on the same lap. It's just push, push, push. <laughs> you know, you, you can't just cruise when you have three cars running that close. Looking for position, it's go for every tenth, every tenth. NM Racing needs people power to get to its pit box. We break um, transmission parts, one of the transmissions of the, of the rear brake. Uh, team did an amazing job. 15, 20 minutes and we are on track again. The Jeanette number 215 had a huge lead in the GT4 class, but that's now in danger. It was really scary because we thought when uh, Xavier was driving, Xavier Lloveras, he speak on the radio. I'm just in the chicane, I have no traction. So he come only with the, with the rolling speed, rolling, rolling, rolling to the pit lane. If we lose the traction in sector one, great finish for us. So. The fastest lap of the race belongs to Jake Dennis in the 620, but their issues earlier on mean that their chances of a podium positions are all but lost. Well, pretty slim for us. We're a long way back, um, but uh, yeah, we're going to put um, our two uh, AM drivers in for the last two stints so they can continue to gain some more experience. It's actually their first time in in uh, a GT3 race, uh, let alone a 24-hour race. So um, yeah, it's been a great experience for them, and um, we're sort of trying to build their experience up ready for the, the next one we're going to do in Cota. As we tick towards the 24th hour, the Bohemia Energy Ferrari is trying to get as close as possible to the lead of the race. It's tough because the battle of the, on the lead is really close and all the time the, the leaders are changing and especially now in the end, the Porsche, the Herbert Porsche is really, really mega fast and we had little issues during the night where we had problems with the brakes, so we had to repair and stop two times, which wasn't planned. And that cost us lots of time, unfortunately. So now we are just trying to push as hard as we can to really catch them, which is probably not happening. Hoffa Racing is fighting for the win in the A6 AM class and for championship points. The team uses race tape to get their car back to the track as fast as possible to get back in the battle. Third overall, the Rothko Mercedes but there's smoke coming from the engine when it comes in for its pit stop. We had a problem with the, with the belt, uh, the alternator belt, which also connects uh, the water pump. So um, water temperature went up and um, yeah, battery went down. So we came in. The crew worked as hard as they could to change the belt and get the car back into the race, but the problem returns immediately. Obviously something is wrong again. So it's really a shame because we were on a, on a pretty safe third place and to lose a podium here after such a hard race in the last um, yeah, hour is, is really disappointing. In the last half an hour, the 446 Ginetta of Endurance Team Romania is having issues too. The gearbox goes to the neutral and then uh, I make, after two seconds, you go to fourth gear and uh, I spawn. I couldn't make anything. Additional problems forces the car to retire. We had uh, the problems first time with the gearbox, now uh, we lose uh, oil from uh, differential. Ram Racing's Mercedes had problems in the earlier part of the race. Since then, they've gone from strength to strength. Unfortunately, we had a gearbox problem early in the race, um, but since then, our car was running pretty good. Now we have a small problem with the front splitter, so we are losing some front down for us. But in general, our lap times are really competitive and uh, it's a shame that we couldn't go for a good result because I think the team and all the drivers in the team, we deserve to, uh, to have, a, have a good race. Ram started from Paul, of course. The current leader is proof that your position in qualifying doesn't really mean a lot in endurance racing. Uh, yeah, we started on P9 in qualifying. After qualifying, now we're P1 in the race. It's only one lap between us and if you see at the Mercedes a few minutes ago, everything can happen, especially in the last minutes of our race, and we hope to continue until the end. Team Herbert Motorsport didn't need to relinquish their lead. Daniel Alleman made no mistakes and brought the car home after 24 hard-fought hours as the overall winner of the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona.
He's proud of the team's results. Oh, I don't know. Everything's okay. Everything works. We have good uh, uh, driver change. We have a good car. We, everything. No problems. Taking that chequered flag is a feeling beyond compare. Oh, I, I, I feel it like a like a bird. Everything is okay and everything works very well. I'm so, so, I'm so happy. Yeah? Out of the number 11 Ferrari, an exhausted Yeri Pisharik. Yeah, it's very hot. <laughs> I am completely dead. <laughs> there is quite hot and also it's big responsibility to take a last stint. <laughs> the team had hoped for a better finishing position. First place, but due to the brakes, we couldn't today, next time. I'm very happy to, to the result. Uh, for the first participation uh, for 24 hours, uh, it's, it's fantastic uh, for me. The race organisers are very happy with the diversity in both of the series racing this weekend. Ah, it was fantastic. I've, I've never seen so much competition. And look over here, a Porsche, Ferrari, Mercedes, number one, two and three. It's uh, fantastic. And in the TC category, he, uh, a Cupra, uh, Audi and a Seat. It's amazing. And the result was very interesting because uh, the beginning uh, was uh, probably more oriented uh, through Mercedes. Finally, uh, Porsche won, uh, Ferrari was second. I think it was a very, very interesting race and also in the, in the other categories also was very interesting. Big fights and, and two teams of, of Barcelona won some categories. That everything for me was fantastic. After 24 hours of racing, it's the Herbeth Motorsport number 911 Porsche that takes home the Trofeo Fermi Velev. A one lap gap back to second, Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha Ferrari and EDEX Sport Racing number 17 is third. In the classes of course, it's the same three teams who take the A6 Pro class, Herbeth on the top step, Bohemia 11 second, EDEC number 17 third, A6 Am goes to Pro Sport number 85, the Hoffa number one is second, and Car Collection 34 in third. Liebert Lamborghini number 10 wins SPX, ahead of True Racing's number 116 and 117 in second and third. In the 991 class, Porsche Laureate number 64 team takes the top step with their 65 sister car second and the QSR number 94 in third. And the GT4 win goes to the local NM racing team, Nova Race second, QSR 254 in third. After the podium ceremonies, a photo opportunity with the overall winners of the 24-hour GT series, the 24-hour touring car series and the winners of the 24-hour e-sport competition. It was very tough, especially on you know the ice and all the back pain that you get from being sit in a seat like this for like a very long period of time because the stints were very long. So it was very tough physically and mentally. It was just fo focusing on your times and doing what we do best. This was the twentieth running of the twenty-four hour race here in Barcelona. And it certainly won't be the last. Of course, of course, we are we are re really orientated to make uh, at least five years more. We are we are dreaming to make much more, much more years of 24 hours of Barcelona. Our next race uh, is 12 hour race of uh, Spa at uh, 12 October. So we will, like hope to see you there. And that is where the European Championship will be decided. The Hankook 24-hour touring car series was racing here too at the same time and you can see all of the excitement from that race in a separate programme. Now that the 24 Horas de Barcelona Trofeo Fermi Vélez is over, our sights are well and truly set on the Hankook 12 hours of Spa Frankishamp. This is where the championship will be decided, so be there as a spectator or a competitor. All of the information is on 24hgtseries.com.